This video is going to be all about breakbeats and drum and bass, but instead of endlessly hanging around inside a door and chopping samples, we're going to take some slightly different look at it. Because I'm a drummer myself and I'm currently really eager to learn how I can play electronic music styles on my small electronic drum pad, the Nord drum, and also about what kind of sounds I need to create in order to play some, for example, neurofunk beat. some liquid drum and bass beat or some big beat beat. If you ever wondered what all those wide genre descriptions mean, this could be a cool video for you, because I'm also not going to pretend I'm an expert on all of this. I'm basically in my exploration mode trying to trust my ears and translating what I hear to my drumming technique and the way I create sounds, which might seem a little naive sometimes, but at the same time it's my honest approach for exploring those styles. And I had the time of my life doing it, it's super fun and I really hope I can share some of that enthusiasm with you in this video. My name is Janis by the way and let's jump right into it. First, let's check the term breakbeat, because in fact breakbeat isn't the name of a genre, but of a sampling technique that was used in hip-hop before actually all those electronic styles emerged from it. The word breakbeat also refers to the fact that the music has been sampled in the moment of a break where only the drum beat was playing, and this way you're kind of free to put any other stuff on top of your own new song with a sampled beat. And also if you compare lots of those sampled beats, you realize that they almost always sound like some sped up version of some 60s and 70s funk and soul beats. For checking out the musical parameters that make some breakbeat sound like some actual breakbeat and what kind of creates this feeling, we're going to take a look at the most popular of them all, called the Amen Break. It's a four bar drum loop that has some quite charismatic musical elements. So you can for example see that in bar three and four, the snare drum gets shifted, kind of breaking the even flow of the beat, but at the same time making it feel like some call and response element. You often see in break beats, even today, that instead of using just one bar, it's often like some two bar or four bar structures using this kind of element of call and response, because if you always have the same beat, it can sound a bit repetitive, but if you have kind of the same beat but built in slight variations, there's some super active element to the music. Another thing that really stands out here are the ghost notes, and ghost notes are notes not as loud as the accents, and in drumming language you often have ghost notes on the snare drum, which means you have accents, and here you often have it on two and four, or also those displaced notes, but you also have those softer notes, creating this kind of carpet underneath the groove, but also the, those notes really add up to the flow, making it sound really vivid. And you can also see the ghost notes are played in between the cymbal notes, adding a kind of syncopated feel to the music. And syncopations, it's difficult to describe. It's mostly notes in between that also break the even flow of a beat. And while they are not played as accents, they kind of add the syncopated feeling to the music here. And while of course you can keep sampling the Amen break, I feel like nowadays it's quite simple to come up with your own, eventually more unique patterns yourself, because you get all types of drum sounds or samples you can use, sounding basically the same as the Amen break, but you can then make your own rhythm with it. And by applying those things I mentioned, like ghost notes, syncopations, the call and response thing, and like displacing notes, you basically have all the tools you need for creating those types of beats. And also for this video I created some unique beat with my Nord drum, and it's kind of special because I can only play with my hands, so you can see that the hi-hats are always between the kick drum and the snare drum. It doesn't have that many ghost notes, but it's like a two-bar loop also with some displaced note and also some syncopations, and it sounds like this. This beat is going to be the foundation for our exploration of all those individual subgenres. I mean, sometimes we have to play something new, but if possible, I want to use the same beat because I want to show you that you can actually use the same beat and put different types of sounds and patterns on top and also use different tempos for actually defining different types of subgenres. So when people say breakbeat, they often mean breakbeat hardcore, which actually is a genre that has a quite ravey vibe. 
and also shares some similarities to house although of course the beat sounds really different but what i often heard are those kind of piano chords that could sound like this or some other type of rhythmic pattern that anticipates some sort of melody but in a very very simple way. There's also some darker style of breakbeat hardcore which is called dark core and here you often hear those dark basses. Some mysterious pads. And some haunting melody. A very fun genre was big beat because here the beat was actually slower but really fat. So all types of techniques such as parallel compression or distortion were used for really pumping up the beat. And it's not such an electronic sound. It's basically a mixed, mashed up sound with kind of samples but also many sounds that sound like basses or guitars. So to me it also has some kind of rock touch mixed with a hip hop flavor in a very sampled way. And here I basically created a very groovy bass line. Some type of one note melodies that create some interesting rhythmic interplay. And also some chopped cymbal. New School was putting a focus on the electronic side, so in contrast to Big Beat, it was a bit faster but also more synthesizer based and often it was focusing on the bass sound, so there was not so much stuff happening but there was a very strong bass line and here's one example for that. Since I have a background in jazz, I also explored the genre broken beats, although it came up a little later than those ones I mentioned so far. And also the sound character is really different because it doesn't have so much of the sampled character. It sounds more musical and I don't mean this in a positive or negative way. I just mean that it sounds like the parts have been performed and composed more. And the beats are usually heavily syncopated and often also played with a kind of sluggish feeling. And somehow they go really well with those jazzy chord patterns with the road sound. Another big genre that emerged out of breakbeat hardcore was jungle. And jungle is a super intense and fast style, so sometimes it goes up to 180 BPM and has super active snare patterns. So I hear less kick drums for example, but lots of snares. So there was a chopping technique used that really focused on the snare patterns, which makes the music sound super intense. Now in contrast to this super intense snare part you have some groovy dubby bass. And sometimes also some dubby chords. And I'm focusing on the musical parameters here, but just imagine some super high intensity vocal line inspired by reggae and dancehall on top of it. Jungle was setting the tone for drum and bass, but while drum and bass kept the kind of fast tempo, it still sounds really different because it, it's not as wild. It often has those low sub basses that sound really cool and give a very relaxed vibe to the music, although the drums are so busy, but they actually have space. And often you can also hear those atmospheric pads on top, but you can see that the drums are really in the foreground.
Now, inside drum and bass there are various subgenres, and I want to share some of them with you. For example, liquid drum and bass, which is quite a smooth style. I would call it a bit mainstream also, because it has a quite popish touch, often with vocals, often with piano and just very beautiful chords. It's not really edgy, at least what I listen to. And I hear piano very often, so you could have this kind of cool piano pattern. And some bass line that actually puts those piano notes into perspective. Now, there's also the more IDM side to drum and bass, which I personally like a lot. So, for example, there's a genre called drum funk, quite fast, like around 180 or more. And while the general sound of drum and bass is already kind of drum focused, here it's focused even more. So you can hear lots of drum variations. It sounds a bit like some drum solo, while just maintaining a kind of cool bass on the bottom. And if you're really into abstract stuff, you should check out Breakcore. Here I decided to not play myself because this style is all about manipulation of the beat and also super fast. So here you reach actually 200 BPM and more. And I decided to load some of my beat samples into a sampler, use the slice mode and then to just randomly trigger those places, which gives me those super chopped up and abstract drum beats. And often this gets combined with some atmospheric pad. Next are tech step and neurofunk, and I find it a bit difficult to really understand the differences between the two of them, but Generally, they have a focus on the more technological side of sound and also on some more dystopian, futuristic sound design I felt. While Tech Step has a raw energy, so it's a little more industrial, techno inspired, and here's some little example for that. While Neurofunk has a very refined sound design and here I had to use Arturia pigments actually for using patches that have ongoing modulations. It's too complex for the Nordrum. And it really sounds like people are investing time into setting up those patches specifically and creating this kind of dystopian futuristic soundscape. And I also noticed that both styles focus more on a 2 and a 4 snare drum, so I didn't find or didn't hear that many displaced notes. There's also jump step, which to me sounds more like some fun genre. It's usually really fast and brings in the kind of dubstep element that makes it sound a little goofy sometimes, but on purpose. And I also picked some dubstep sound and you can just often hear those typical dubstep phrasings with those triplets, for example, or whoop, 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 those types of things. Here's my little example. And if you keep the same sounds and the same tempo, but just change the beat in the way that it focuses on half time, so it only plays a snare on the three, you're in the genre of drum step, which just feels a little more groovy compared to this kind of hyperactive feeling of jump up.
And wow, those were lots of styles and of course this was a super superficial look. But I just hope you enjoyed it and got some little understanding on how those things work and maybe got interested in now listening to some more broken beats for example or some more liquid drum and bass. And if you like this way of looking at genres, I made some other videos about it. So here you can find videos about techno and house, basically with the same approach. Otherwise, if you liked the video, don't forget to click the like button. I'm also always happy about comments. And apart from that, I wish you lots of inspiration with whatever it is that you create and hope to see you soon again at this channel. Bye.